Well, what's going on, my YouTube addictive junkies? Welcome back to the show again. Thank you for tuning in, by the way. I apologize for all the videos, uh, or lack of videos lately. I haven't been, just hadn't had time to make them, man. You all know about everything that happened since September. Uh, well, if you're a new subscriber, you might not know, but you won't have to look back very far to figure it out. Anyways, uh, time to get back to work. It's going to be different. <laughs> I'm working on this uh, Martin D15 today, and uh, already made. I've done quite a bit. If you've seen those videos yet, where I've clamped the neck up and tightened the truss rod to get more back bow, lesser relief in the neck, that worked. Uh, oiled the board, polished the frets, made a new bone nut, made a new tusk saddle, and uh, I got six new bone bridge pins here it's going to go and it's going to be fitted to it i'm going to fit those tonight today whenever you see this and uh, seal this crack up on the back heel back here the neck i showed it to you but i'll show you again <laughs> you can probably see it under those these lights better see where the the neck meets the side that big crack in there i showed it to you before a lot of guitars Martin puts the neck on the body and then they finish it. But a lot of the uh, lower end guitars, I'm not saying this is low end, it's not by any means. But after a certain model down, they finish the body and they finish the neck and then put them together. And then you've got an opening there after over time forms. And that little crack allows all the elements to get in there through that bare wood the, the joint itself the tendon and the mortise and everything in the uh, dovetail it gets in there and it messes you know changes the uh, humidification in that wood and it swells up and gets a little swells up and gets a little eventually the neck uh, joint will get bad and come loose or the neck block or something you'll have trouble with it if you leave it like this if your guitar is like that maybe it's been years this guitar is several years old and while it did maybe affect the front of it a little bit I don't see where it has hurt it any there's still enough adjustment in the saddle and in the truss rod and everything you know to get low action on it without buzzing so come on over I'll show it to you again and we'll talk about it I showed you this before but just for the sake of a different video I'll show you on this video see that crack is tighter than it was the last time we worked on this guitar this went together that would go in there a whole lot farther that's the same piece of paper too it won't go in there nearly as far as it used to it was way farther than that and it'll go in the sides you see knock it down and drop every fucking thing all right let's try it again <clears throat> it won't go in the sides as easy as it did but that needs to be sealed folks that shouldn't be left open you have bare wood inside the joint itself and uh, what i want to do here uh all i want to do is put glue i'm not going to force it into the crack or around you know deep in there because that'll make the neck hard to get off if it, you ever have to take the neck off of it all I want to do is create a seal. I'm going to use a tight bond wood glue to do it for the spare wood to bare wood. Of course, we don't really want it to stick that much. We just want to seal this crack so elements doesn't get in there and affect that bare wood that's just on the other side of the crack. All right, I got to go get uh, wet tiles and glue. Oh, I got the glue right here, but I'm going to get a uh, rag, something wet. Hold on. All right, I just got a damp, wet cloth here. I want to wipe it around as good as I can make sure it's clean, as clean as we can. Make sure that gets right up against that crack. Good. I call it a crack. I don't know if that's the proper term or not. I'm using the Tight Bond Original Wood Glue. Like I say, we just want enough there to make the seal, to seal that. I think I can use the applicator tip on this bottle for this I can't show you very much of course 
wipe away the excess pretty quickly. Like I say, we don't want, this is not to hold the neck on better. Not anything like that. <laughs> All this is going to do, let's let that sit for a minute. It might run if I turn it over too fast. I'll do the other side and this back here. And she will be sealed from the outer elements. And that's what we're shooting for. You won't even be able to tell I did this. Once the glue sets up, it kind of turns clear like. And you won't even be able to tell it. Go ahead and turn him over this way. And do the same thing here. And that's it. Knock the guitar down. Spill the glue bottle and everything that can go wrong will. I'm sure any of you that do this know about that little bug. It's always lurking. <laughs> yeah, I think I can turn it up okay. And if it runs anywhere, it's going to be straight down. See, that did come out a little bit there. I was afraid of that. And we're going to do the very same thing now. Up here on the, the very top. Just like so. Hopefully that's all this I'll need. So go ahead and close him up and clean him up. And get that wiped off. All we want to do is just create a barrier there to fill the, you know, stop the crack from letting in elements from the outer world. <laughs> no elements getting in there. I'm sure over the lifetime of this guitar they have already, but we can't do anything about that. We can just stop it from doing it anymore, you know what I mean? Now, i just got to let that sit. A few minutes so that, you know, when I turn it over, the glue doesn't run like it did just a minute ago. This water, too, will help that glue to get, you know, in there farther. And like I say, we're not gluing a joint. We don't, we're not doing this. That'll keep, you know, it won't separate when you put it under string tension, but it'll keep it sealed, you know, under string tension or any other time. And, uh, you know, when you polish your guitar, polish is not going to get in there. Dust, uh, oil from your skin. Everything eventually works its way into a place like that. And like I say, the uh, dovetail inside there is just bare wood. And uh, it's 68% humidity in this room right now. And that's all getting in there. Or was. It's not getting in there right now. And it never will again. Alright, let's uh, let that say a few minutes. I'll bring you back and we will fit some bridge pins. Bone bridge pins it's getting. Here's a better look. Like I say, once that glue sets up, it'll be like clearer and it'll blend right in with the finish. It's got like a satin finish on the guitar. There's a real shiny spot. Somebody shined it with their belly <laughs> over years. But uh, when that sets up, that opening will be sealed. It'll be history, baby. Right here is the uh, saddle I took out of the guitar. I think that's focused. Someone had marked it there, I guess. And it had this piece of a guitar pick, he said it was. Where he took too much off of the treble side. That'd be the side right here. Took too much off of that. And uh, he cut out a guitar pick and put it on that one side. I've already got the new... Uh, Tusk saddle in there. I haven't uh, set the action height yet. Still got to do that. I just thought I would show you that. This he told me clearly to throw it away. <laughs> That's what he said. It's bone. Sounds like plastic. But it's bone, I'm sure. It's too hard to be plastic. I've got the camera roll hooked back into the tripod and the cords and shit hooked into it. But you can see there the whiteness. It's already went away. It's been uh, probably an hour. And it's the white, you can't even tell it, man. You can still kind of see a separation there where the crack is. But it's not open. <laughs> it's closed with glue. And you can't, you can't see it. 
And there's your one last better look at it. I know you can't see it good at that angle, but believe me, it's flawless, baby. It's good. All right. Bone ridge pins. Now this saddle fits in there pretty tight. If you can get it out with your fingers, but it's in there pretty good. I mean, you don't you don't want it to be, you know, so snug fit that you got you can't get it out. In fact, leaving them a little bit loose tends to do something to the vibrations of the guitar. Well, then we got one that fits right there. That's perfect, man. They'll all do that. Of course, you should always put the same pins back into the same holes but that's not important right now <laughs> we just want to get them to fit the holes first I see that one needs to it needs a little bit of work I can get those out of the way it don't take very much it's not going to take very much for that in fact it's probably it right there because this thing is pretty sharp yeah oh yeah Perfect. I'm lining all these up with the, uh, you know, the, the cut in the pin facing forward. Well, this thing is sharp, man. It don't take very little bit to make these fit. And stay tuned. I got a trick, another trick I'm going to show you. I've talked about it on this channel before. And on this video, I'm going to show it to you. Let me go a little bit more. It don't take very much, man, with this reamer. Always want to check them before you ream them. Every one of them's needing it a little bit. Well, these are brand new, so. You know they're not worn any. And obviously the bridge pinholes are not worn any either. So I'm gonna have to grind some away to make these fit. This thing is sharp, man. I lost the, the groove. There it is. And there is six perfectly fitted bridge pins but we're not done with those yet hold on i want to show you what i was talking about just a minute ago <laughs> this right here is something you should do to every acoustic guitar that's got bridge pins you should do this what we're going to do is grind the end of this make a little uh, angle to it so the ball doesn't come up there and catch it on the bottom of this the pin and then doing and it goes completely out of tune makes a hell of a noise see how flat those are now I'll show you when I get done the difference You can see that now. There's no way the ball can hang up on the end of that. Stick and pop and make that horrible noise. Now, of course, once these are put in there and it's strung up, they should always go back into the very same holes. It's like they're married, <laughs> you might say. That's a slick job on, on the end of those pins, man. I'm sure you all have had it happen. You're tuning the string up. Maybe you put a new string on. You're tuning it up. 
you get it in tune or almost and it pops real loud and the string gets completely loose and out it, that's what's happening the ball sticking on the end of the pin if you follow your pins that way you'll never have that problem again whenever I get a guitar in here I always check everything man always check everything I'm not turning these screws maybe just barely to make sure they are tight and you want to use a screwdriver that fits man I can never stress that enough I see so many in here that's and I already checked these nuts up here so we're good there get a lot of them in here that screw heads is rounded off man they're just a hell of a looking mess because they didn't use the right tool for the job it's important to use the right tool for the job on any job okay so let's recap here a little bit what all we do so far I oiled the board polished all the frets tightened all the keys checked them made a new nut bone made a new tusk saddle ordered new bone bridge pins fixed the uh, crack in the opening there that should have finished over uh, that's all I can think of I still got to set it up I set the action in the ball field park range <laughs> with a low E and a high E strings on this guitar but I still have to put all the strings on it, tune it up and then figure out what we got to drop the saddle down back here to oh yeah and I clamped the neck forced the truss rod to put more back bow in the neck that was a major problem the owner tightened it, he, he was scared to turn it anymore he said and it still had too much relief so I'm, I hope you've seen the video now by now, before now where I clamped this, I put uh, two blocks of wood, one at each end of the fretboard, and a two by four on those blocks, and clamped the neck in the center, forcing back bow into it, Now I could turn the truss rod some more, without having to worry about breaking it. And it worked. So, all we gotta do next is string this puppy up, like I say, set the string action on it, and uh, we're gonna finally get to hear it. And I think it's gonna be a bomber, <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Uh, the guy owns this guitar, and the other seven of you, I think now, that's got guitars here, I am so sorry, man, this is taking so long. This is not the way I work. Uh, we're just always health crap going on, you know, and having to run to the hospitals and the funeral homes and the nursing homes, and we finally got everything taken care of, I hope, and uh, hopefully we get back into business now. Uh, I don't know, man. Links below here, check the new channel out. I would highly, highly, highly advise you, if you like my shit, you better click the links, man, because uh, I'm thinking about posting new videos on Patreon, and then on the new channel, and then this bigger one, the bigger one, last. Because it's just, it's dying, man. It's not getting any traffic. YouTube won't do anything to help or check it even. So I would highly advise you, if you like this kind of thing, move over to the other channel. The new videos are all going to probably eventually be posted over there first. They'll still be posted here, but they'll be last. I'm thinking that's the way it's going to be. So click the link below, and I hope to see you there. Cheers. See you on the new channel.